Hey, thanks for checking out my video. Uh, before we get started, I would like to give a big YouTube shout out to Matt from Comic Book Rescue. I uh, met him actually at my local comic book store uh, briefly, and he told me on a YouTube channel. I checked it out, and his enthusiasm was in part uh, responsible for me wanting to launch my own channel here and talk about comic books. There's plenty of great YouTube videos on comic books. Uh, make sure you check out all of them, Reggie Collects, Comic Book Tom, and many, many others that I can't name right now. I'll put a link in the description to a couple of them that you can check out. Be sure to hit like and subscribe on those guys. So today, um, I am going to be opening up some of these Walmart three packs, as you saw in the title. And these have been fun to kind of collect. I have several of them here. I've got uh, one, two, three, I think I've got seven of them. Um, so this will be fun to see what we get. It's, it's been hard to not open these. I've been sitting on these for a while, just picking up one or two at a time. Uh, if you're wondering, these are found out Walmarts, but not at every Walmart. Uh, I went to three different Walmarts locally, and only one of them actually had these. Uh, they're usually found up front next to the Pokemon cards where the registers are. So go check out your local Walmart. Um, they may have it. They may not have it. And they don't all carry them. So it is what it is. But we'll see what we get. Um, I remember back in the day, we used to be able to get three packs as well. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, they used to sell comics in three packs. They weren't quite a mystery pack though. It was, you know, one comic facing one way, the other one you could see facing the other direction on this back side. So they were kind of, uh, you know, you could see the, you could see two of them. And then the only real mystery was the third one in the middle. But um, a lot of times they were uh, all part of one run. So you'd have like all, like a whole G.I. Joe pack of three, three packs of G, uh, three comics of G.I. Joe and they would maybe be 21, 22, 23, all in one pack together. So um, these are different. These are random. We don't know what we're getting except for the front cover. So let's find out what we are going to get. If you want to open these, uh, there's cardboard on the back. So the best way to do it is to get a little razor blade and just go along the back like this. And there you go. Easy peasy. This way you don't, uh, you don't damage Hopefully you don't damage the corners or anything. So let's see what we got on this first one. Obviously we know Iron Fist. I'm a bit of a fan of Iron Fist. Uh, at least, it, you know, I used to be when I was a kid. So we'll see uh, what the next one is. Oh, Jedi Fallen Order, Dark Temple number five. So that's interesting. I know Star Wars uh, books have been um, pretty hot lately, so kind of neat and a lenticular this seems to be pretty uh, pretty common let's see this is incredible Hulk and She-Hulk so it's actually a She-Hulk comic this is the the actual cover and the lenticular is playing homage to uh, incredible Hulk. so neat we we'll checking that one out next up uh, Avengers Black Widow I got this, I'm a fan of Black Widow, uh, the movie's coming out, can't wait for, to see the movie, it's got Taskmaster on the cover, what more do you want, right? So, let us see what we got. Okay, Avengers Black Widow, the lentic lenticular, Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, I have to turn this around to look at it. Guardians of the Galaxy. So we have Guardians of the Galaxy playing homage to the uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Pretty cool. I like that original Infinity Gauntlet cover. I don't know if you can see it in there. Uh, we have an Iron Man. Iron Man number one. Tony Stark. Nice. So pretty good. Pretty happy with what I've gotten so far. Really neat. Okay, uh, next up is Gwenom vs. Carnage, the King of Black series. <clears throat> I have not been keeping up with any type of Gwenom stuff or anything like that. Um, I know it's kind of an alternate timeline thing. I don't know too much about it other than uh, my Gwen Stacy that I remember growing up was dead. So, uh, 
the whole Gwenum thing. I've been out of comics for a while. I just started recently re recollecting, and it's one thing I haven't really kept up with. But from what I understand, this is the first appearance of uh, Mary Jane as Carnage. So I decided to give it a shot and see what we get. So Gwenum versus Carnage number one. Excalibur number 11. Looks like, is that Jubilee on the cover? Okay. Now the Lenticular. Incredible Hulk homage with Captain Marvel. So Captain Marvel homaging the Incredible Hulk. Lenticular. And it's got an interesting 3D back thing on it too. Not sure. Advertisement. <clears throat> Not a big Captain Marvel fan, but Will you look interesting? Okay, here's one I already have. I actually have this one, uh, Wolverine Infinity Watch. Uh, I just love this cover, and I just bought this just because I love the cover so much. I wanted a second copy, so uh, we're gonna see what's behind it. door number three. You're gonna find out watching my videos that Wolverine is my favorite character. Um, I know it kind of seems uh, cliche nowadays, but it is what it is. A little scuff maybe. So Infinity Watch number one, just awesome cover. Love that cover. Avengers 26. This is a uh, one of these sideways covers, and obviously you can see Gwenpool underneath it. So here's the. Uh, the Gwen stuff that I haven't gotten into, so I guess I'll have a chance to get into it a little bit. Gwenpool number 21, we'll see what this is about. So, okay. Moving on. Jane Foster Valkyrie. This might be interesting. This is a uh, also a number one. So I know with uh, the new Thor movie that they're working on, who knows. Oh, that's not good. So the the sticker here, apparently the shrink wrap broke underneath it, and the sticker is actually stuck to the cover right here. So I'm gonna peel it very slowly so we don't tear anything. Yikes. There's a big hole right here, and the sticker is just right through it. That's that could have been fairly disastrous. Okay, Valkyrie number one. Let's get moving. Ooh, this is a nice one. Shuri number three. And her recent appearance in Falcon and Winter Soldier is uh, going to make this interesting. So, nice pickup. But happy about that one. What is this? Apocalypse and the Extracts? This, I have no idea what this is. I don't know. It, uh, okay. Looks very trippy. Venom number one. Uh, recent Venom number one. I'm not sure. I, I haven't kept up with the Venom series. Um, this one has been open a little bit here on the top. So, so I guess somebody tried to peek in. I could not see what anything was other than that. I know that there's another lenticular in here. So we're going to find out what the rest of this is. Um, I know Venom's a popular character, been around for a while. So Venom number one, main reason I got it. Here's the lenticular, no surprise there. Looks like an X-Men homage. Um, which one is this one? Royals, okay, so this is the Royals number nine, homaging the X-Men lenticular. I think you might have seen that in some other ones. And another Star Wars, General Grievous. This is nice. General Grievous number one. I like this. Very happy with this one. Very, very cool. My son loves General Grievous. This would be cool. Very cool. Total win with that one. Alright, last one. Last pack. Eternals number one. We know they got the movie coming out, so... Uh, Eternals number one. This should be a Walmart exclusive variant cover, I believe is how this works. So 
let's see what we get. Yep, here's the, uh, shows you that this is an exclusive cover. Oh, Spider-Man Noir number two. Yes, yes, yes. Very happy with this. Very, very happy. Awesome find here. I like that. And this is, what is this? Leonard Lenticular, of course. Iron Fist. Um, I can't tell what it's... Is it just homaging itself? Oh, Iron Fist? Looks like there's, yeah, looks like... It's an Iron Fist and Sabretooth homage. Okay. Interesting. Well, I like Iron Fist. Very excited to check that out. So... All right, so now that we've done with that, I got one more thing I wanted to show you on this video before we close things out, and that is bagging and boarding. I have this um, comic Vox Machina Critical Role. This was a uh, free comic that I got from uh, just free comic book day. So uh, I need to rebag it. I always rebag all of my comic books when I get them, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, a few tips that I have. So. Um, first thing you're going to notice, let me put this here, is on the back of this, there is a piece of scotch tape. Every comic book store you go to will use this. I hate it. Uh, this has been used forever, and I can't stand it. Um, you can do it if you want to. Uh, when you put it in a bag, just fold this over, put a piece of scotch tape. It's cheap. It's easy. It gets the job done. It keeps it closed. If you don't ever want to pull your book out again, it's fine. Um, if you do like to pull your books out and read them on occasion, in my opinion, this is terrible. Um, but yeah, it's just scotch tape, so you can use that if you want to. The reason I don't like it, over time, this tape will stick so hard to this plastic that oftentimes it just ends up tearing the plastic. So you'll end up damaging your bag just trying to open it. I've had that happen countless times. And you can kind of see you see how, I hope you can see how much of a bend I'm putting in this just trying to open the tape right here. I hope you can see that on camera. Um, I'm just lifting up trying to pull the tape up. This is what, that's what it does. Um, I've had it actually tear bags before. And then the other problem is if you're not careful when you're pulling this book out, you've got this sticky piece of tape on the end and it'll catch on that cover as you're trying to pull it out and you could potentially damage your cover. So I hate using these. <clears throat> there. there we go. Just did it. Of course, I wasn't being careful. I'm normally much more careful than this. And this is why I'm using a free comic book to demonstrate this and not a more valuable one. So my recommendation, don't do that. Of course, free country, do whatever you want. But um, if you're going to use tape, I suggest using painter's tape. You can get blue, green, I think come in all, all kinds of different colors now. Uh, just tear a piece of this off and use this instead. It doesn't, it may not look as aesthetically pleasing because this nice piece of clear tape is, you know, it, it's not an eyesore or anything. But it'll do the same job without sticking so hard to the bag that you end up damaging your bag or tearing something that the adhesive on this isn't nearly as strong it's strong enough to keep it closed but not so strong enough that you could cause damage so this is a better option if you're going to use tape i would highly suggest this over scotch tape or you can do what i do and i just buy resealable bags um, i'm going to show you how this one works so this is a bag this is a board this is how you start. You buy a pack of bags and you buy a pack of boards. You may notice on this board there's kind of a flat surface and a shiny surface. The company that makes these, the shiny surface is actually a coating and the company will tell you to put the shiny surface facing forward so that the back of the comic is against the coated part of the board. Now I've also seen online where people have said that over time, the coating will stick to the back of the comic book, potentially causing damage. So they use the flat side instead. Um, I will leave that research up to you to decide however you wish to do it. I have not come across that situation myself. I'm just passing on information I have heard. 
um, from other people. So whichever way you decide to face your board, slide the board in to the bag. Simple as that. Then you slide your comic into the bag. Now usually how I do this is I start on this corner here, not this corner. I kind of angle this corner in just because it's less risk of this getting uh, caught and folded as you're trying to put it in. Some of these bags are a little tight. So I just ease it in that way and then I ease in the other side and then you just slide it on down. Nice and easy. Light little tap to get it all the way down and it is in the bag. From there, uh, I'm going to have to turn this around just because this is how I like to do it. Kind of press it flat and the self-sealing bags will have this little piece of material that covers the adhesive. And you just pull this off, just like that. Discard it, and then you just fold the flap over. And I usually start in the middle and then work my way out to seal it. So middle and out like that. And that seals it nice and flat, and you're done. And then when you're ready to take it out, because it's self-adhesive, you just open it. The adhesive is on the back, not on here. So it makes pulling it out much easier. And then when you're done reading, because hey, these are comic books. Combo books are meant to be read, right? Seal it back up and it goes back in your collection. Just like that. So I highly recommend resealable bags. Um, your comic book store should have them. If not, you can order them online. Uh, the only other thing to note is that there are different sizes. Um, unfortunately, I do not have, I did not think ahead and pull out a Silver Age, but there's a Silver Age size, a Golden Age size, and a Modern size. The Golden Age will be the largest. The Silver Age will be slightly bigger than this one, and then this is the Modern size. Now, the Silver Age uh, is usually like pre-1970 something I'll have to, uh, I have to look it up but um sorry I can't think of uh, the exact date right off hand but I know a lot of people would just get silver age bags and boards and just put everything in silver age bag and and that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that you'll just have a little extra um sticking out actually I can grab one real quick So this is an example of a comic book in a Silver Age board and bag. And you can see there's a little bit more around the edge here, a little bit more room than with the modern size. This is modern size, this is Silver Age. This book will fit in the modern size as well. Um, it's just a slightly tighter fit, so there's less room for it to move around. But some people like having the extra room. So that's totally up to you. It's perfectly fine if you want to put everything in Silver Age. That's fine um, if you want to put modern that's fine too um, up to you I use silver I tend to use the silver age for pre 1990 and that's not a hard rule that I follow all the time but it's just kind of a general guideline I set for my, set for myself because a lot of my books prior to 1990 are from when I was a kid and they were just loose for many 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 years and they're not in great condition so trying to fit them or squeeze them into a modern age bag sometimes the uh it's a little too tight of a fit because they have they have some rolls and some tears and stuff like that and i don't want them getting damaged anymore just getting them in and out of the bag so the silver age bags give me a little bit more room to slide them in a little more gently so they don't tear up much more but the newer more modern books that are in better condition i don't mind putting those in a modern bag and board because there's a little more of a snug fit but that's completely up to you so there you go. I uh, hope that helped. I hope to have some more videos out really, really soon. Thanks for watching. Um, if you feel compelled, like, subscribe. Always welcome, never required. Your viewership is more than enough. And thank you so much. Uh, remember, collect what you love and stay safe.